Hey everyone, welcome to Group Text. Well, I am reuniting with, oh God, someone I knew before either of us had kids, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, for 12 seasons, Cheryl Hines has played Cheryl David, the put upon wife and then ex wife of Larry David on HBO's smash hit comedy series, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Cheryl made her TV debut in 1993's, I love this, Swamp Thing. <laughs> and thankfully went on to star in such hits as The Flight Attendant and I Can See Your Voice, as well as films like A Bad Mom's Christmas and Waitress. An impassioned environmentalist and sustainability advocate, easy to say, mm-hmm. Cheryl has launched a line of self-care products with her daughter, Kat Young, called Heinz and Young. Clever. Oh, and she's also married to Robert Kennedy Jr. Just a side note. Here to talk about the final season of Curve, her environmental mission through beauty and what she might like to wear as first lady. Cheryl Hines, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Melissa. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's been way too long. I know. I know. We, we used to see each other on a ski trip, uh, yeah. a charity ski weekend every year. And then every now and again, was it at Largo? Largo, or yes. different events. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 It's been too long. It's been For too sure. long. Yeah. Okay, so I got to ask you right off the bat, Mm -hmm. take me back to the first table read of Curb. Well, that's funny because there there are never any table reads because it's all improvised. Right. But was there the first first episode, you guys all at one point had to get into a room and say, this is kind of what we're beating out. No, we didn't. Never, that, that has never been the process. And it's, it's crazy to look back on because even the first three seasons, I wasn't even allowed to read the, the show outlines. So Larry writes a show outline. I mean, you know this, but for, for a, a sitcom or a script, it's usually um, a minute per, a, a page per minute for the show. Right. So if you're doing a 20 minute show, it's at least 20 pages, maybe 25. But um for Curb, Larry would just write a three to five page outline and just say, um, in the first scene, Cheryl tells Larry her parents are coming for two weeks. And that's it. And we don't we wouldn't talk about the scene before we started shooting because uh, because it's improvised, Larry really wanted to catch everything at, while it was fresh and right the first time you said it. So um so yeah, I when we when we shot our first episode, I remember driving home from the shoots thinking, uh, I don't know how this is a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> like we just sat in the living room and uh talked about nothing. How is that a show? Um so yeah, it was it was so different than any other show I've worked on. And especially with it being so improvisational and you've done so much improvisation and have come out of sort of that school, how fast did you know there was chemistry? Oh, I knew the moment I met Larry. So yeah, that my audition was just to improvise with him. And I, I don't know everything I had heard about him. <laughs> I was expecting uh, some sort of, creature in the corner that didn't want anybody to talk to him um so when they opened the door and you know he shook my hand and said hello I I I immediately uh sparked with him you know and he and it and I thought oh he's not what I imagined but then now knowing what I know yeah those things are a lot of the things are true you know he doesn't he doesn't love for people to touch him. <laughs> no, but honestly, who does? Yeah, who like, does? Like, who really wants just people to pet them? No, no nobody, one. nobody, nobody. How about, uh, I don't know, when I was pregnant, I just remember strangers oh. wanting to touch my belly. Yeah. That was so strange to me. I was like, I don't even know you <laughs> or you do, I've never had the urge to walk up and just touch a stranger's stomach no. whether they're pregnant or not yeah it's just a line but uh yeah getting off a uh, off path a little bit yeah but Larry and you know when you're auditioning or when you're um improvising with somebody 
if you're trained in improv, you're you start improvising with people you really know. And so you do touch them a lot or, you know, you make these fast choices. If, you know, who are these people? They're a husband and wife and they're, you know, stuck in an elevator. The lights go down and the lights come up and they might, you might be making out, you know, but you make a a fast choice. And a lot of times it's physical. But um, so with Larry, I just remembered that, you know, somebody had told me don't touch him. (laughs) during the audition um and I get it because I because after that when I would after I was cast and through the seasons I would be in on the auditions for other people um because we had to improvise with people right and once in a while you know somebody's auditioning for a dentist and they start to go in to t- touch Larry's mouth and he's like no uh uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> if it's someone you like, you're behind them going like, yeah, do no, no, not no, touch oh, wrong impulse. <laughs> yeah. Plan B, plan B. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do people know when to yell cut? Cause I know when my mom did an episode, first of all, she was so scared. And this is a woman, you know, who came out of second city and was already, you know, a megastar queen, queen of the she, stage. Yeah. Yeah, she was so scared because she loved the show so much. Yeah, so she and was it, on Curb. She so she did an episode of Curb and yeah. was playing herself. It was yeah. on the red carpet. Um, yeah, it's usually uh, usually the scenes go they go on for a while. I always feel for our camera crew because they're holding those cameras. You right. know, and it's like when is this thing over? Um, but, but there's just a, you know, you just, the director just feels it. So I I got to direct an episode, which was really fun. And you just know, you know, you just feel it when all, all the information that, that they wanted to get out is out and something funny happens. And then it's like, okay, we got it. Okay. Yeah. You know, cause, cause I'm sure from the other side, from the, from the acting side, there's times where you just want to turn around and go, we got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I will say with curb, it's, it doesn't feel that way. I mean, that's that maybe once in a while, but um, because it, it's never, even when you do the scene over, it's never the same. No. So it never feels like other projects where you're like, if I have to say this line, one more time. I, I've said it every way I can set it, say it, but I will um, um, do it again. Here we go. Uh, but so I, we never really had that feeling on curve because you're never saying the same thing twice. Yeah. Cause we've all been in that situation. You're like, I know we got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know we got it, but they're like, Oh, but you know, somebody walked by in the background and yeah. you're like, uh, I just, sometimes the best words, which are when you've messed up going again, can yeah. be the best words or the worst words on yeah. set. Yeah. <laughs> we had one, dire- or the other. yeah, one or the other. We had a director on Curve once who, he was so, I think he loved the show so much. and was so entertained by uh, each take that he would cut, he would come out and say, that was perfect. That was perfect. That, you guys nailed it. Uh, let, let's go again. Let, let, let's do one more. We were like, What? You just said it was perfect. Why are we going again? Okay. Well, well it's better than what I used to say on Fashion Police when I was producing from the floor. I'd be like, that was great. Can we do it again faster and funnier? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's always yeah, so Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay. So <laughs> that was not funny or fast. Okay, here we go again. Yeah. Exactly. Faster, so your on screen relationship with Larry has very much evolved. I mean, you know, you two seem to be Finally at peace with the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny what? that the, I mean, the show has been on for so long, right? It's been on for 20, oh, five years. That's crazy. Oh yeah. Cause that was, we yeah. Did, we did a one hour special yeah. first in 1999. And um, so yeah, it kind of feels right and makes sense that, we would be divorced, but still, 
you know, still in each other's lives. And it, when you're watching it, you feel like, oh, yeah, that I think a lot of people can relate to that. Hey, you've made peace with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, this this person's part of my life, whether I like it or not. <laughs> so what I didn't realize when I was looking at things about you was, number one, you basically only had one solid acting job, mm -hmm. which was Swamp Thing, mm -hmm. before you got cast in Curb, but that you worked as Rob Reiner's assistant? Yeah, I was actually work. Yeah, I was working as Rob Reiner's assistant when I got the one hour special. But I was, I, so yes, I had moved here. I shot, there was a TV show version of the swamp the swamp thing where there was right. also a you know film right um but they they shot it in orlando florida and i and i had gotten a good role on swamp thing i felt great about it uh moved out here and i thought oh man when hollywood sees me on swamp thing they're gonna go crazy <laughs> Who is she? Who is she? We need her. Um, and they didn't. Uh, so I worked at as a bartender at, at a hotel, um, the Intercontinental Hotel downtown LA. And then and then I met somebody who knew somebody who knew that the Reiners needed an assistant. And I started working for them. And I, I really loved, uh, I still love them. I And I loved doing it. Um, and it's funny because Rob is friends with Larry. And right. After I got the part, I saw Rob and he said, are you playing Larry David's wife in something? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a funny, um, funny circle. But yeah, like you're saying, I mean, one of the reasons that I did, I was cast as Larry's wife is because they wanted an unknown actress. So they didn't want to do, you know, cast somebody that people would look at and go, oh, that's Melissa Rivers and she's playing right. Larry's wife. And I know it's not really Larry's wife. So it actually worked in my favor that I hadn't, <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't been on television much. Well, you know, again, and you bring that people, they didn't want someone who was recognizable yeah. to play his wife because of the success of their show. You must constantly, and I remember right at one point this happening all the time with you, people thinking you are actually His Larry's wife. wife. And yeah. the only thing probably worse than people wanting to shake your hand in a public restroom when they haven't washed their hands, or uh -huh. that's always a bad one, is how much time do you spend explaining to people when you yeah. try, like, no, no, I, I uh, play her. We yeah. have the same name. Well, see, that's what's confusing. Well, especially at the beginning, because, you know, Larry said, why don't we just, why don't we just use your name on the show? And I, I said, uh, you know, great. That sounds good. Easy. I know what to answer to. Yeah. But then when I would go out and people started recognizing me, they'd say, hey, Cheryl. So I think, oh, I, I must know this person. And then they'd start talking to me and and quickly, you know, they would say, where's Larry? And like, you know, I'll be in an airport. I'm like, well, I don't actually travel with Larry. I'm not married to Larry. <laughs> They're like, yeah, but you're Cheryl Davis. It's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Kind of. Yeah, then it's like, uh, I actually have a plane to catch, but yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> At the very beginning, did you think to yourself, I have no clue how, because it was a one-off special, how long this is going to last. I mean, first of all, did, were you shocked they took it to series? And yeah. then you, I, I, no one goes into anything anticipating the response. I mean, at one point you had to say, this show is so weird. Yeah. This is never going to last. People aren't going to get it. Yeah. Well, you know, at that point in my career, I had, I can't remember, or maybe I had even tested for a pilot, you know, and as an actor and things have changed through the years, but, but it used to be where you would have to sign all your contracts 
before you go in for the final audition to be in a pilot that would become a TV show. And it was seven year contracts. Yeah. That you're everybody signing. was so desperate. They're like, what? You could have a kidney. I know. You know? Yeah. The next seven years, you got it. Um, but you also saw the script and you had a good idea of what the show was about. <laughs> you know? Um, so I had been through through that process. And then, yes, when Curve came, we did the one-hour special. And it was, the idea was Larry was going back to doing stand-up comedy. And this right. was behind the scenes of him going back to do stand-up comedy. So when he called and said, I'm, I want to do a TV series. Will you play my wife? Um, well, first of all, I said, wow, this is the best news I've ever heard. And he said, I hope that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, please tell me that's not true. <laughs> well, actually it is, but okay. You um, say, I, I have a very low bar. <laughs> I mean, at that point, my bar was a very low. Um, but yeah, when we started shooting it, I mean, even I remember watching the special in the editing room. You know, Larry was like, you want to come down and, and see this? And I watched it and I, I laughed. But I remember thinking, I'm not sure <laughs> people are going to get it, respond to it, appreciate it. But, you know, but it was like, we'll see. I don't know. I doubt it, but we'll see. Yeah, exactly. Like, people aren't going to get this. Yeah, this not going to. By the way, to this day, my, mom's, my mom will say, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> no, I understand. And that's okay. <laughs> And you are not our audience. You're so not com- our audience. You were I'm never meant to get it. Yeah. yeah. I'm completely at peace with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much cursing. Like, oh, right? Yeah. Especially <gasps> JB Smoove. She's like, why does he have to curse all the time? I'm like, I don't know, mom. Here's his number text. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm looking back because, you know, first of all, it's the end, but it feels like we keep having these last. It's almost like Cher's tour. Yeah. Like her farewell tour. Yeah. For it the just third keeps, time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just keeps keep, coming back. Yeah. So at this point, when you look back, which was your favorite episode? Or what moment sticks out with you of, I, we la- this is where I laughed the hardest? Oh, man. There, there are a lot of those. There are a lot of those moments. But when I look back at the whole series, I think about the season of the Seinfeld reunion. And that was so surreal, extraordinary. I mean, as an actor, I just, I love Seinfeld so much and all the actors that, that are in the show. And, and when we shot it, Cheryl David, my character, was in the Seinfeld reunion (laughs) show. So it was like, we actually, this is funny because there actually was a table read for the Seinfeld reunion show. So on curb, they, we were on a soundstage, which never happens. We were always on, on location, you know, just in some weird living room, but But for curb, (laughs) The soundstage was the location. Right. Yeah. For, yeah. For the Seinfeld reunion. Right. So they, so they recreated the Seinfeld Mm -hmm. set when I think it was the actual set because I think it had just been in storage. So I would walk into the soundstage and, and now I'm, I'm on the Seinfeld set doing a scene with Jason Alexander and Larry's off to the side, you know, saying, oh, don't, don't, don't do it like that, you know, as Larry David, but Larry David from Kerb. I mean, it was just like, ooh, just amazing. And that's when I would, those days I would drive home and think, I could have never imagined that this would be happening in my life. It's 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 pretty spectacular, the, the, the experience of it. But now, because I want to make sure we talk about this, because I have a million things I want to talk about. But you have just released a body care line yeah. with your daughter Kat, 
who I cannot believe is 19. No, I know. She's she's going to be 20 in two days. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cooper turned 23 in December and is graduating from college this year. Like, what I happened? I don't know. And isn't it weird that that's how we tell time now? Don't you just yeah. tell time by how old your kids are? It's, 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 I mean, I guess that's what happens, but it, <laughs> you always yeah. think it's other people that have kids that are in their twenties. And then next thing you know, it's, oh, my kids are in their twenties. Yeah. So Kat, my daughter, Kat, um, her last name is Young. And when hands, she, yeah, hands, hands, and hands and Young, we started a company, um, and Looking for the bottles behind you. I am. I am. I have all. I actually of, think they're over your you know, I right can, shoulder. Here, like I, got, I found this on. There um, you go. We we make um, like you said, we we do a a skincare, body care, um, self care because the candles are so nice too. But she started getting ready to leave, and I said, "Do you want to do a want to start a company together?" Because then you have to talk to me from school. Yeah, exactly. Um, and she said, sure. So then, so we, we created this line and we did it. Like you said, we were concerned about the environment. And I really, I really can't stand single use plastics. It's just too, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot on our, our little world. So, um, so we started this line that's, we do everything in aluminum. I'm not great at holding this up. Aluminum and um, glass, ceramic, bamboo. This is our little linen spray, which is so nice. Spray this on everything, and and it's all. Um, I know it's all environmentally friendly and yeah, but it's recyclable smells, and yeah, smell, exactly. Yes. But it smells amazing, and it's it's all inspired by the beach. So we just have anything you need to relax and make your skin feel good and your brain feel amazing <laughs> yeah. which is ironic because yeah like you said my the Heinz and Young launched right when my husband <laughs> announced that he's running for president oh that's thank by the way thank you for stepping on the announcement oh I'm sorry. thank you thank was you that your big moment Exactly. I like that you were going to break that news on this podcast. Exactly. Really, I appreciate that. Love you too, honey. <laughs> you can cut that part out, rewind it, and edit it together. You won't, but yeah. yeah. It's hilarious, but that shows that it's a real relationship. Because oh, yeah. you would never think to discuss that. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, I did not see that coming. Do you I would never think to say, by the way, it's, because you'll say, oh, yeah, we're launching in March. I'm just making right. it up. Yeah, yeah. And so you just assume that they're not going to do I, something in March. Right. I never, in my wildest dreams, imagined. Um, by the way, your husband might decide he's going to run for president while your self-care line launches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sitcom. I could not have uh, made this up. But, yeah, so that is. So it's an interesting, it's like, um, it's like Veep and um, Modern Family. Yes. It's just like a, every, just this crazy life that I'm leading, these two different worlds. But it's fascinating. Oh, yeah, it's fascinating. It is fascinating. And, you know, you're very, you're both environmentalists. Yeah. And, you know, Larry and his wife are big, his ex-wife are big environmental. So this is not a new lane for you. Right. Right. You know, and you and you and Bobby met before any of you were divorced and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's lovely that the relationship predates all that. So it feels very organic. But one of the things I thought was really, that I wanted to ask you about, because my father committed suicide. I've always talked about it a lot. I know how horrible I was to the first couple men my mom started dating. And you look back and go, they were great guys. Right. You, you were, know, they were good men. I just. You were not me, in a place. No. You, yeah. There were, there's a lot of anger and, but, and the unanswered. Kids, yeah. Questions. The kids were young. When you, when you look back, let's see, they were. 19, 18, 16, 
12. Yeah. Those are tough ages. How did you navigate that? Yeah. So those are my- And by the way, and how did you explain to Kat? She went from an only child to the youngest of five. No, the youngest of seven. What? Well, because because you, Bobby has- oh. Yeah, Bobby has two two kids from his first marriage, four kids from his second marriage. Um, well, yeah, they were you know a, a different a range of different um, ages, and you know, Melissa, I got very um, I don't want to say lucky because it wasn't really lucky. Luck didn't have that much to do with it, but for, fortunate that. Uh, that I, I have really beautiful relationships with them all. And even at, at the time um, when four of them, their mother did die by suicide, it was, um, of course, it's so overwhelming and uh, dramatic and difficult. Complicated. Complicated. Um, and at the time, I mean, Bobby and the kids were all in New York. I was still in LA. And so I, our relationship was, um, you know, it was a long distance relationship. Right. So it wasn't like I was in, in the middle there at the time or anything in that, in, in their space, let's just say. So I was fortunate enough that things were able to move at a, a, a pace that was um comfortable comfortable yeah manageable um and and it was a it was a lot of time and um but yeah it probably I'm sure it would have been a more complicated situation if I if I was you know if we were all together in that space I think that would be I'm sure that's a very hard position to be for well, anybody to be in you know and i so related to that because you know i now have the the gift of hindsight right and i think to myself wow i was a beast <laughs> how you know, old were you at the time 18 oh wow you know so i looked at their ages i'm like oh i know who these kids are, kids are yeah. i was one of them yeah it's hard. I mean, first of all, it's hard to lose a parent or a friend or anybody that you love. It's hard to lose them. Uh, even more complicated to lose them by suicide. One of my best friends died by suicide. Um, and it's it, complicated. That's the best word is complicated because yeah. grief is grief. Right. And that's it's already this, complicated, by the way. Right. So it's. I always find that it's, what for me it was grief with a lot of confusion yeah you don't have answers right and you and you and then and you have to get comfortable with the idea that you're not going to have answers and that's a really that's a hard space you know it's not because it doesn't it's that doesn't feel fair it's different no. when somebody dies for other reasons you know it's different just because it logically you can you can get your head around it. Get your head around it. But but something like suicide is so yeah, complicated. There's yeah. no other word there's other no other way to say it, is there? No. It, it's complicated. And the other thing I always say is when I talk to people because I work in the mental health space as well, uh, specifically with suicide uh prevention, and I really my belief is we need to focus on the younger generation. But what I always say to people is I'm so sorry. There's nothing to say other than this sucks. Yeah, yeah. And all I can tell you is you will come out the other side. Yeah, yeah. That's grief in general, but with suicide's like, and it's by the way, and it's okay to be angry. Yeah. It's you know, it, it would be shocking if if someone wasn't angry. Yeah. That but again, it, people yeah. feel guilty, right, for being angry. Or surviving, or what? What did I do? Did I do something? Could I have done something different that would have? And it's and you know better than anybody. No, there is nothing you could have done. It doesn't have to do with you, right? So it's hard. It's, that's a hard. 
uh, that's a hard lesson. And also, I don't even know if it's a lesson that you learn, but it's you get through it. Like you said, you find a space in your um, mind and in your heart for it. You don't forget it. You don't try to, oh, I'm not. I'm going to get this out of my mind or I'm never going to think about this again. You just find a space for it that fits inside your body. Yeah. You can visit that you could, you know, be angry well, at sometimes or whatever that looks like. I, I think it says a lot about you and people talk about you being one of the nicest people in Hollywood that you were able to navigate that through teenagers. And again, we, we you still have a teenager who in general are beasts. They, it's, it's, a, it, listen, it's tough to be a teenager. Yeah. It's but, like you're trying, they're trying to figure out, and I think it's even tougher now. I'm yeah. sure you feel that too, because it, it, like you're saying, even working with the younger generation and um, mental health, it's, they're really challenged with it, with all everything, the stress that's, the stress that's happening. It's even harder these days, I think. So you know, and I know you've been asked this a million times recently. Did you ever think that when you and Bobby got married, he'd be running for president? We all know you were going to say no. Um, and clearly when he announced on the same day as you were announcing your skincare line, there was not a lot of discussion ahead of time. But what I know you did Rob Lowe's podcast. Yeah. And you talked about what your first lady style would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, but i love the fact you said i would be in my ratty pajamas but before i received people i would ch change it to my good fancy ones. pajamas <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure i have no idea listen i have no idea what happens inside the white house i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you <laughs> what one minute inside there might look like or feel like but I'm sh and I'm sure whatever I imagine it is, it can't be that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, just, it feels like it's just people, you know, uh, swirling around you everywhere you go. Which yeah. It, it probably, I imagine it probably is. But I don't, yeah, I, well, when I met, when I met Bobby, I actually, I was thinking about this the other day and I, I've never said this to anybody, but even him, I meant to tell him. I remember when I first, first met him and started to get to know him. And I said, I said, I think you'd be a really good president. And he said, why do you say that? I said, because I, you have a, you're very smart and you have a really um, clear way of explaining complicated ideas to people where they can understand and feel like there's a solution um but that was way way back in and at the time he said well i'm i'm not going to be in politics <laughs> <laughs> he said you know i'm an environmental attorney and i feel like i can accomplish more doing this and not being beholden to a political affiliate and i was like okay great perfect and i'll do a i'll do a self-care line and just take it easy <laughs> <laughs> are you prepared for you know people don't realize actors have to work very hard and very long hours yeah are you prepared if you really have to hit the trail uh well i i've gone on the trail a little bit with bobby and it, you're right it is it is non-stop and it it's similar to being an actor in some ways, because when you're shooting a project, when you're shooting a you're on, film, you're off, you're on. Yeah, yeah, you're like, you know, for the next 12 to 14 hours, it is going to be nonstop and you got to be ready for anything. But yeah, on the trail, it is crazy because you'll, you'll get in the car, you drive for an hour and a half, then you're at the place. And it's like, oh, this is a fundraiser with, you know, this person, that person. And then you go do that, you know, you're meeting people and everybody wants to tell Bobby how they, what they like about him. And, and, you know, so you're just sort of taking it all in and then you get in the car and I would think, whoo, got through that. Yeah. <laughs> then it's like, oh no, we're going to drive 20 minutes and then we're going to do this next thing. And it's just nonstop. I don't know how, I don't know how Bobby does it. I don't know how any 
politician does at Odyssey. Um, I it's got to be, you know, it's got to be one of those things where you get into such sensory overload yeah. that you get in the car and just pass out. Yeah, yeah, there is that too. You have to, be, and you have to be, you know, you have to be surrounded by people that you really trust and that you care about and who care about you. So they're they're making sure that you eat and sleep and um, take you to the next place. So yeah, it's, and and we all know that Bobby's got some controversial views and you've spoken out and then deleted or stayed very solidly in your stance and have, have again thread that needle um it's got to make it a little tough sometimes at home but what <laughs> got to be a little complicated what i'm dying to know <laughs> i just thought of this <laughs> does anybody in some of the smaller areas get confused and think larry is running for president when they uh, see you, when they see, when they they see me. Yeah, that uh, they're not connecting you and Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I have to say nobody's ever th thought that before, uh, which would be hilarious. Exactly. But I do. I know. I I thought I was thinking like it's too bad that Curb's not going on because that's what we need to see is is Ted Danson run for president, <laughs> right? <laughs> and Larry loses mind <laughs> exactly on Curb on Curb. Okay, Cheryl. You are the best. Curb Your Enthusiasm final season streaming on Max. And where can we find Heinz and Young? Uh, ShopHeinzYoung.com. Okay. You are a pleasure as always. Melissa, so good to see you. So good to see you.